we're switching the conversation from something that is mediated by the chef demanding a certain item to be put on a static menu to the fisherman telling the chef what is the most sustainable, freshest, and most local catch available to them. have to be able to take whatever comes through the back of your kitchen door okay. every week with less <laughs> than 24 hours notice. And the reason there's less than 24 hours notice about what your fish is going to be that week is because it's just that fresh. Oh, look at that. The chef has to be adaptable, creative, innovative. <laughs> I think part of the fun for it for me personally is the exciting challenge of not knowing what we're gonna get until the night before and then how to best present this beautiful product that she's brought us. That's your California halibut. We're asking chefs to highlight and present some very underloved, underrepresented species in, in a high-end way so that people who are interested in sustainability understand that that means broadening their palate and that means experimenting with different things they've never even heard of before. He got 40 pounds in a single drop. Just like sent 10 hooks down, they came up with four pound fish on every single hook. Right now we have this amazing lemon basil that's growing in our garden. So we're doing a sauce with the lemon basil and a little bit of bell peppers as well because the season is really nice for peppers. We do a cuisine called kaiseki, which is one of the most formal ways of dining in Japanese cooking. The most important theme about kaiseki is definitely honoring ingredients that are closest to you, that is representative of where you're at. So when a program like Dr. Dish comes along that is really honoring the ecosystem and caring about the environment, it just falls in line with everything that we stand for. If we start diversifying the American palate, that's going to naturally lead to a more environmentally stable and sustainable environment. So we are on our way to Providence to meet up with Chef Michael Simarusti. He was our spearhead chef when Dr. Dish first launched in LA. Without his participation and his passion and his determination, uh, we wouldn't have this program. So with Dr. Dish, we're targeting the leaders of the industry. If they set the standard and say, these underloved, underrepresented fish, that that's in vogue, that that's the thing that we should all be eating, then that will naturally have a cascading effect into restaurants in a broader so nice sense that everyone can afford to eat at. It's pretty big. He's big. It's like a two-handed deal. Three Jesus fish. Christ, that's huge. <laughs> Got it? They're not supposed to be that big. Just 43, 43 pounds. Oh my god. Yeah, that, that's like massive. We're here in the fish room at Providence Restaurant. That's a nice one. We are a modern American fine dining seafood restaurant. We talk to our guests in the dining room about how the fish was caught and who caught it and where. To me, as a chef, there's just no, there's no level of excitement that comes from opening up a box of farm-raised whatever. It is the last great wild food that we have as a fairly regular part of our diets. This fish is brought to market with very little impact on the fishery, very little impact on the earth really, and therefore, to me, to my mind, it definitely represents a greater value, even if the cost is maybe a bit higher. We take the fish, we take the skin off of it after it's been filleted, and then we wrap it in uh, lardo. It's a pork product. And then we wrap that in foie de brick, which is a crispy sort of like Tunisian pastry. And then we cook it in a pan until it's very crispy all around the edges, and then we slice it, and it'll be served with a relish of black cherry and porcini. If we overexploit the same species that we have been historically over the past several decades, then we won't have wild fish. The type of model that Dr. Dish represents is the model forward, really, and a, and a model that will keep wild fisheries healthy, you know, for generations to come.